I'm Dr. Mark Nevins, and I would like to introduce you to minimally invasive techniques with RHPDGFBB or GEM21S for periodontal regeneration at extraction sites. Growth factor enhanced regeneration utilizing PDGF allows us to achieve a minimally invasive approach and develop bone and soft tissue for periodontal and implant regeneration. An example here of a tooth with 100% bone loss was managed minimally invasively, avoiding more invasive flap approaches for bone grafting with autogenous bone graft by utilizing a combination of freeze-dry bone allograft with recombinant human platelet-derived growth factor, or GEM21S, in a minimally invasive flapless socket and periodontal regeneration procedure. Here we can see eight years after implant placement, the regenerated bone and periodontium for the adjacent teeth is stable and intact. If you're challenged with a case like this where we present 100% bone loss, how would you approach this today in your practice? For myself, I utilize typically a freeze-dry bone allograft combined with GEM21S or the platelet-derived growth factor that comes in the GEM21S packaging. Here we can see the mineralized freeze-dry bone allograft being mixed with the GEM21S and diluted with some sterile water. We want to mix this thoroughly to make sure the bone material is completely hydrated and that we have some excess solution so that as this soaks for at least 10 minutes prior to use, that it does not uh, dry out at all. You'll see that I'm actually going to tip this upward so that the liquid is staying on the bone material. As we look at a clinical example, here we have a tooth that has a vertical fracture and 100% bone loss. My goal is to present to you how I manage a site with such advanced bone loss with a minimally invasive technique. We can see here in the video presentation that even though there's advanced bone loss, I will section the molar so that the mesial and distal root can be removed atraumatically. I'll use some elevation here, and then I'll use a micro forcep to remove each root individually. You can see the soft tissues on the buccal surface moving because all the bone support, 100%, has been lost on the buccal surface. We'll remove the roots atraumatically, and then once the roots are removed, our next challenge is going to be to degranulate and debride the site. This takes some time and we'll use a combination of instrumentation of spoon curettes, Gracie curettes, uh, sterile water irrigation, and a 10 cc syringe. In this case, because I have such a large soft tissue cyst, I'm also going to use a 15 blade to cut away um, some of the cystic defect, which you can see here. But uh, we want to completely remove all of the soft tissue down to the bone. I'll use uh, magnification, typically 4.5 magnification loops while I'm doing this. I'll rinse the defect, and I'll even sometimes dry the defect with gauze. I'll be very careful with my suctioning because I don't want to disturb the narrow papilla at the interproximal sites. My goal will be to regenerate the periodontium at the adjacent teeth as well as throughout the extraction site. Once this is completely debrided, I'm going to then approach a sequence of uh, packing and condensing my growth factor enhanced bone matrix that's already had time to soak while I'm doing the extraction. I'm typically going to mix that graft material prior to beginning the extraction procedure so that it has at least 10 minutes. We can see here where we're in the process of beginning to con condense the bone. You can see that soft tissue is moving on the buccal surface where there's complete loss of the buccal plate. Here I'm using a little bit of sterile gauze to uh, help condense that and I'll use a, uh, a bone condenser as well as the back end of a periosteal elevator. Once the bone is completely condensed, I will use a uh, collagen membrane to stabilize the bone material. You can use gem cap or gem ad adapt to do this. The goal of the collagen membrane is mechanical stability. It is different than a conventional GBR approach where we're trying to separate soft tissue layers. 
I'm going to place the membrane over the top of the surface and then place some medical grade cyanoacrylate to hold that in place. Here at the six months post-operative CT scan evaluation with a cone beam scan, you can see that we have approximately a centimeter of new bone fill in the defect, reconstituting the contour of the ridge. On re-entry surgery, we can see that the ridge has a normal contour. We've reestablished a, a nice zone of keratinized tissue where it has filled in at the site of the socket. Unlike flap approaches where we'll lose uh, keratinized tissue, here we'll actually gain keratinized tissue in the site of the socket, which we can then move labelly during the surgery. Here we are preparing the site for the implant, and you can see the volume of new vital bone. We can see the bleeding in the bone, and we can see that, that the bone has... Um, uh, significant density to it as you can see the pressure being applied as the bone is being prepared here first marking the site with a round drill and then going to a two millimeter uh, twist drill and then we'll expand to a 2.2 a 2.8 and a 3.5 uh, millimeter uh, twist drill all in preparation uh, to place our four point uh, one millimeter by 10 millimeter uh, fixture. And here you can see again drilling to about uh, 10 millimeters and just going through the sequential uh, drilling steps. What's impressive here is that we don't clinically see a significant amount of the bone particulate as we've seen in histologic examples with uh, GEM 21S enhanced bone material we get new bone material over most of the graft uh, particles, and we get very fast bone turnover. So even by four months post he healing, we're seeing resorption and replacement of bone replacement graft uh, materials, and that translates to what we see clinically as what looks like vital bone, because most of the bone particulate is also um, covered by vital bone, uh, even if we were to return to this at about four and a half months. In this case, an out-of-town patient, it was about six months before we got to the implant placement procedure. Here we can see the implant being placed into the bone, and we really have about type 2 bone, and we'll see how the fixture stops sharply at 45 newton uh, centimeters when it gets to the depth of placement right about here. So we really have established not only an adequate bone volume, uh, but the bone has um, an excellent density to it, which is going to work well for implant uh, placement. And we'll then go through a normal course of approximately three months of implant healing uh, prior to proceeding with the restorative phase of treatment. This will be closed simply with uh, chromogut sutures, and then I'll allow that to heal for about three months prior to second stage surgery. Here at the re-entry, the clinical photograph really depicts the uh, volume of bone and really 90% of what we're looking at there, if the radiograph of the implant, we can see that the implant's in about 95% regenerated bone. Let's move on to an aesthetic site. And here we have a central incisor that's fractured. It's had a buildup in a provisional crown place by the time that we see it clinically. And the question is, are we going to do an immediate implant here or a staged approach? When I combine the patient's smile line, with the thin gingival biotype and the thin labial plate and the size of the tooth compared to the site of the dentulous ridge, it's not that I couldn't do an immediate implant, but I think it would be high risk here. I'm going to choose a staged approach. I'm going to use a flapless technique for extraction. I prefer to use a piezo-ultrasonic instrumentation down into the PDL space to make it easy to then uh, luxate the tooth with a forcep for atraumatic removal, maintaining the buccal pl plate, which is easily damaged without an atraumatic approach. I'll use the piezo-ultrasonic instrument very patiently, getting all the way into the depth of the PDL, and this is going to allow for that atraumatic uh, removal. You can see we have a throat pack in place. There's very little tooth structure remaining. If the crown were to pop off or the crown and post were to pop off, we don't want the patient to swallow that. Here we can see after that amount of piezo instrumentation, the root's going to be easily luxated, easily removed, the buccal plate's intact, and then we're going to slowly and sequentially pack that bone material in place. Here we can see that we're using the small end of the condenser to make sure we don't have any voids in place. 
I'm not worried because I'm using a particle size of between 250 to 630 microns. I'm not worried about over condensing the bone material and blocking off cellular and vascular access. So I'm able to condense the bone pretty firmly. That's going to give good mechanical stability and give me a better chance of maintaining that bone in position and in place. The growth factor is going to induce the bone forming cells to uh, migrate into the wound, as well as to raise the levels of vascular endothelial cell growth factor in the wound, which will induce neovascularization with new blood vessels in the wound, all establishing a, a, an excellent environment for bone form, formation. You can see how thin the labial tissues are. My plan will be to allow this to heal for four months, to do updated diagnostics with a new cone beam scan, and then to plan to return for implant placement and placement of a connective tissue graft to enhance the biotype um, for the uh, peri-implant tissues. I'm going to provide periodontal regeneration to the uh, periodontum for the adjacent teeth with this procedure. So we're doing periodontal regeneration at an extraction site with a growth factor enhanced bone matrix combining the GEM21S or the recombinant human, pl human platelet-derived growth factor with the mineralized cortical freeze-dry bone allograft. Again, the uh, particulate size here is 250 to 630 microns. Once the graft is stabilized in place, then we'll take a collagen membrane such as the gem uh, cap. We'll cut that to fit the exact size within the level of the gingival margin. We want that to sit flat on the bone material, not sitting up on the gingival tissues because we want it to sit tightly adapted to add mechanical stability. We're going to stabilize it in place with a medical grade cyanoacrylate. And that will stay in place anywhere from uh, 12 hours to three or four days, depending on the patient. The uh, if the membrane is sitting up onto the adjacent tissues, it's more likely that that's going to get dislodged because there's sort of a, uh, a space under it where it's not as tightly adapted. For this patient, we're going to utilize an Essex appliance, and we'll have that laboratory fabricated with a denture tooth so that we'll have adequate aesthetics, but it's going to be an appliance which doesn't put any pressure on, onto the ridge, such as a flipper appliance, which I would prefer uh, not to use. Here we can see that we're uh, completing the condensation of the bone. I'm using the back end of a boozer elevator here to uh, gently pack the bone. And you'll notice that uh, here, even in the edited video, that it's a time-consuming uh, procedure to pack the bone. It takes patience to slowly pack that in place. I relate it to uh, condensing amalgam or alloy where it's going to sort of pack and build on itself. You wouldn't want to just put the whole uh, uh, amount of bone in at one time and not slowly condense that onto itself. And uh, here just packing a little bit more there and then we're going to uh, be able to move on uh, to placement of the membrane. So I think the uh, important take-home messages here are that we want a mineralized graft, such as a mineralized freeze-dry bone allograft or a uh, mineralized uh, xenograft. We want to mix that with the GEM21S for about 10 minutes prior to the procedure. Our periodontal regeneration procedure at the extraction site is going to regenerate the bone on the adjacent teeth as well as the extraction socket. We would like to stabilize the graft material with a collagen membrane. And I suggest using a medical grade cyanoracolate as opposed to sutures because sutures may loosen within 24 hours, which then might create micro movement and bacterial infiltrate and loss of uh, some of the graft material. In addition to that, we want to have a, an appliance which is not going to put pressure onto the ridge. So I'm always available if you want to contact me and ask questions directly. We, again, in include access to the PDF files of the two articles that we've published. And I want to thank you for your attention and good luck in your clinical treatment using GEM21LS for periodontal regeneration at extraction sites. Thank you.